is the fifth video for the YamahaSynth.com programming article series, Manny's FM Expert Examples. In the article, I talked about how I set up the modulation of FMX parameters so we can morph our sound from a piano into a whole slew of digital type of keyboard sounds. So let's go into edit mode and see what we're doing here. We're going to go to part one, muting all our other parts, and we're going to look at our mod control. And you can see here that we're using the assignable knobs to modulate a bunch of parameters. The key ones here are the operator frequency and the operator level. I have a custom curve that I've set up for the harmonic series of the first eight harmonics. So basically this is a stepped curve that goes from 0, meaning 1.0 for the uh, ratio tuning, to 2.0, 3.0, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8.0 at the top. So it sounds like this. I've set this up so each of the parts of the sound uh, do the same thing. So here's part two. Part three. Part four. Part five. Part six. Part seven. And part eight. These guys are on the second page. So that's set up so certain operators in each of the parts are doing that uh, harmonic stepwise modulation. Now I did a slightly different implementation of this in the piano example uh, two voice. So let's go there and take a look. Now this one is different in that I don't have the discrete quantized ratio tunings. I'm actually allowing uh, the frequency to go through uh, basically the fine values. So check this out. So in this one, I set up some significantly different types of modulation. So let's go in and take a look. Go into edit mode. Again, I'm going to pull up part one, and we're going to go to our uh, mod control. And you'll see that I still have the operator frequency and all that stuff. Same type of metric. You see the curve is a lot different. I have slopes and plateaus so that we have a combination of um, continuous fine pitch control, and then it plateaus out at a particular ratio. also heard the attack gets much softer, and I have that program so it happens in the middle of the travel of our super knob, and that's set up on our assignable knob too. I have this bell-shaped curve here, so at the far left, it's the normal attack and decay. The far right, same thing. So 
that creates a whole different uh, type of morphability of our sound. The thing that's kind of cool is, since I'm mixing and matching uh, both those continual fine tunings of the uh, operator frequency, along with uh, some of the operators have the stepwise, as in the piano example one, we actually have a lot more ability to make some classic uh, clangorous FM types of sounds. And by tweaking it around just little tiny bits, you can find these nice little in-between spots where it's really quite interesting. This really showcases the versatility of FMX synthesis in that we can take a pretty convincing emulative sound and morph it in real time to something completely different. So even if our emulation of the piano sound isn't perfect, it's eminently usable, easily recognized as a piano, and I can do things with it that you can't even come close to doing if you're recreating this just in samples. So another thing to keep in mind about the montage is that we have scenes where we can store settings of all the knobs on the panel, including the super knob, and of course we have motion sequences. So let's go and take a look at that. I'm going to pull up our sound from the library here. I'm going to use the... The La, La Mobladi number two. And I've got things stored in the sequences here. Uh, the first thing we have is the uh, really uh, bright piano from uh, the white album Obladi Ablada. You get the idea? Scene two. I'm storing the settings that create sort of a um, electronic sitari type of deal. A little aftertouch pitch bend. And in scene three, we're storing some settings that allow us to give sort of a steel drummy kind of sound. Uh, scene four, sort of a classic uh, FM sound from the past. See if you can name the sound. Sort of a classic Synclavier FM sound that uh, one Mr. Jackson made quite famous. That same sound up high is actually very useful, sort of as a chimey kind of sound. Scene five is sort of set up to be a metallic FM sustaining pad. Thank you. 
really good for clusters down low. And scene six is sort of some weird hybrid uh, sitar kalimba kind of thing. Scene one. And the cool thing is, we have those stored in scenes, but that is all real time morphable with the super knob. A lot of cool stuff going on in there. And again, that's the capabilities of FMX and real-time modulation with the super knob. So those modulations in this example are very much the same as they were in piano example two. Um, I've added some more um, parameter modifications in the insert effects to make some things a little more drastic, but it's basically the same situation of frequency modulation, both continuous and stepped. With the envelope changes. And the last example I mentioned in the article um, is this performance here. Uh, Piano Art Plus M Seek. This is where I'm using the arpeggiator and the motion sequence. So if you take a look at our motion control, you'll see we have a motion sequence set up. And because we're using it with the arpeggiator, they're going to sync together. So this is what it sounds like. So that's an example of how we're using the motion sequence in sync with the arpeggiator to make extreme morphs in our timbre uh, with the pattern. What's different than the way I set this particular performance up is that um, the normal sound is with the knob in the straight vertical centered position and it morphs as you go both left and right. That's to the right. This is to the left. So full left, full right and dead center. So let's go into edit mode and you'll see what we have set up differently here on our modulations and that instead of the stepped curved oops, there we go instead of the stepped curve for the frequency I'm using these bipolar curves and that's pretty much universal throughout all the parts so it goes uh, one way when we go right and a different way when we go left and don't forget we have the ability to store favorite settings in scenes this is our scene one with the arpeggiator that's of course
course, got the motion sequence with it. Scene two is just the arpeggiator without the motion sequence. With scene three, I've stored the uh, full uh, hard right position and all the uh, motion sequences and arpeggiators are off. Scene four. That's sort of the 11 o'clock position. Then we've got scene five, which is the one o'clock position. So that's not too far off from our center, so it's just a minor change from our piano. Scene six, which is a three o'clock position. And scene seven, just a little bit higher. Basically, these were timbres that I liked, and I just stored the position. So use the knob to find a timbre that you like. Remember to save it to a scene. So that wraps it up for this video and this series. Hope you found the articles and videos useful. Hope you found them educational. Hope you found them understandable. And most importantly, I hope you found them inspirational to go in to dig into your montage, play around with FMX. It's a very rewarding system, very, very versatile. Makes lots of cool sounds. So until next time.